Well, thanks very much for, for the introduction and also for putting together this conference. It's a really nice program that, we are, that I'm looking forward to here and I hope you as well. Uh, so, so today I'd like to um, uh, talk about a little bit of a new paradigm of looking at topological uh, uh, phases of matter uh, in the sense that uh, uh, I want to look at edge or hinge modes of three-dimensional topological insulator. So that already implies that you know, I'm not looking at the surface, which we would usually be interested in. Um, so, so why did we not think about that line uh, earlier? It's basically because you know, in mathematics we are told if we have uh, some manifold, then it has a boundary, and that boundary might be interesting. That might be the surface states of a 3D TI. That, that is interesting about it, but then the boundary of a boundary is, is empty, so we don't need to look at that. But that's only true if everything is smooth and, and, and you know, we have a sphere or something, but, but rarely uh, do we have spherical topological insulators uh, in nature. What usually crystals look like is, is something like this. Um, so, uh, so there are edges and, and, and hinges and, and surface steps and stuff like this all over the place. And the question is, are there any topologically protected interesting phenomena uh, happening there? And um, in this uh, rather short talk, I'd like to give you two uh, perspectives on this. One is an experimental collaboration uh, uh, with uh, Matthias Bode's group in Würzburg. And uh, theory was together with Ronnie Tomale. Crystals came from Thomas Story. Uh, I'll only go into this uh, in a rather short uh, 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 time. And the main focus of my talk will be a theoretical, uh, uh, theoretical project which uh, we are pursuing where uh, we are looking at uh, what we call higher order topological insulators. And this is together uh, with my student Frank Schindler who is here and uh, Maya Vagnori from Donostia, Xi Jun Wang, they are doing event structure uh, calculations, Ashley Cook, a postdoc in my group, and then Stuart Brock and Andrew Bernovic uh, as senior guys on the team. So let me start with item number one, uh, uh, these uh, uh, edge modes uh, in uh, topological matters that have been observed already in experiments. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the systems that we look at are so-called topological crystalline insulators here. So you've heard already a lot today about topological insulators which carry a single Dirac cone on their surface but there's also materials where crystal symmetries protect more than one Dirac cone. And um, this one here, it's a rock salt crystal structure, uh, lead selenide, uh, tin selenide is a, is a really uh, a very famous one of these. On the surface of this material, you can actually find four Dirac cones, which are protected by, by mirror symmetries, by mirror churn numbers. And so, so, for example, when you make a cut through this surface band structure, you see uh, two uh, left propagating and two right propagating modes from these Dirac cones, and, and they, they carry different mirror eigenvalue, and that's why you can you know, characterize them by, by a churn number resolved for each mirror eigenvalue. Okay, so, so what uh, uh, our experimental friends in Würzburg did is they looked at the surface of such a material, and if you look at the generically cleaved surface, you will find that it is not perfectly smooth, but you have these step edges on the surface. So there are uh, uh, plateaus which, which have different heights, and there could be steps which are just one atom height or two atoms high or, or, or more. And, um, and so this is a, a STM uh, topography map, and, and you see that clearly where these step edges are. And uh, now, uh, what you can, of course, also do with STM is to look not only at the topography, but also at the electronic structure. And then a surprise came up. If you look at the uh, energy that corresponds to exactly uh, the Dirac node, so you have these Dirac fermions now on each of these plateaus, right? And if you go to the energy where this Dirac node is, you see at these step edges uh, uh, channels lighting up here, uh, conducting channels which are rather confined. But not in all cases, right? Sometimes they, the, the step edge remains dark. So this is the same piece of the, of the crystal surface, once as a topography and once as a, a DIDV map. And so you see here, for example, this, this peak. Here you see the density of states in the middle of the plateau. You see the linear Dirac uh, density of states. And then this peak arises. And, and you see that it is there for this one step edge, one atom high step edge, but it's not there for two atoms high. 
And uh, there is a complete systematic in that, that it's always there for odd uh, step edges and not there for even ones. Um, so then they probed you know, this under various uh, experimental conditions for, you know, for example, by going to very high magnetic fields like 11 Tesla, highest you can do in this apparatus, it's still there. You can do that at 80 Kelvin or at low temperatures, it's always there. And uh, so it's a rather robust uh, uh, channel that, that we see. Um, so now as for a theoretical explanation, I'll, uh, I'll just give you a glimpse of, of uh, what's going on. So, so this is a DFT or tight binding TF, uh, model that's been DFT derived for such a step edge or actually a pair of them. And, and you see now what we vary here is the height um, of the step. And, and you see that well, there's no edge, you just see that there are cones from the surface states, but then if you have one step edge, you, you, you'd see that there is a, a flat bands arising that connect these two Dirac cones. It's rather similar to the flat bands that you see at the zigzag edge of graphene, if that uh, tells you something. And uh, they are completely localized. Uh, uh, the red means the localization at this, at this step edge. If you go to two steps, they are gone. And then if you go to three steps, you get them back even better localized. And uh, roughly speaking, uh, this arises uh, for the following reason. If you look, at this material, at this rock salt crystal structure from above, at the step edge, and you have an even step edge, then you cannot tell uh, the left and the right apart because these atoms in this rock salt structure, right, they come in this uh, AB staggered, uh, I mean, in the two sublattices basically of the crystal have, have different atoms. But if you have an odd step edge that's just one atom high, for example, then you can tell the two halves apart. You see a domain wall, and that domain wall just corresponds to a shift uh, by, by a half integer lattice translation between left and right. And that half integer lattice translation, uh, basically, uh, that gives a berry phase mismatch between uh, the, the Dirac uh, surface states on the left and the right. And as a result of this berry phase mismatch, you have to have uh, uh, some surface state or some, some edge state here uh, that is localized at the step edge. Okay, and that's you know what's what you can motivate theoretically, and also what's shown in the experiment. Okay, that was the first half of my talk, uh, which was just five minutes, which is good. Now we can slow down and uh, go to some more theoretical concepts. Uh, and uh, and this uh, uh, concept we would like to subsume under the uh, headline higher order topological insulators. So, so here uh, I would like to propose the following table. Um, uh, here is the dimensionality um, uh, of, of a system. And here is what I would like to call the order, which tells you how, much, how many dimensions you have to go down before you find an interesting topologically protected surface property of a system. So in all the topological insulators that we know and love, if we go one dimension down and look at the boundary, we find some protected uh, boundary modes, unless you know, the symmetries are, are not uh, uh, preserved by the boundary. So for example, the Majorana or Sushripa Heger chain has these end states, right, the zero dimensional ends. In 2D, the quantum Hall effect has these one dimensional edge states. And in 3D, uh, the three dimensional topological insulator has these two dimensional uh, surface states, right, the rock surface states. And now, um, what we could ask is, is there a way to protect in a two-dimensional system uh, states, electronic states that are sitting at the corner of the system? Or also in 3D, can we look at something that has a, a corner state that's topologically protected, but the uh, surfaces and the edges are gapped? Or, for example, can we look at a 3D material which has these hinge states but gapped surfaces? So the question uh, for these two types of systems has been uh, answered by, by a work of Taylor Hughes uh, and Andre Bernovic uh, that came out recently. And uh, what I would like to focus on in the rest of this talk is this situation where you have a 3D topological insulator with gapped surfaces but uh, gapless hinge modes. Now all of these higher order topological systems here uh, need some uh, spatial symmetry uh, for their protection, okay? So there's no way 
that you uh, can argue to generically cut a system and you'll always find uh, uh, with just protected by a local symmetry uh, such uh, corner modes, you always need something like inversion, rotation, uh, 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 mirror symmetry, something non-local. So in that sense, these higher order topological uh, uh, insulators are generalizations of topological crystalline insulators. Okay, so, so now you're probably interested to hear how, how we can go about building such a thing or, or, or thinking about such a system more concretely. And um, so let me give you the simplest, I think simplest example in 3D that builds up of, on some knowledge about topological insulators. Um, so uh, the specific symmetry that I want to consider is C4 times time reversal. Uh, where the C4 rotation is, a, is the, the Z axis. And so I, I impose the symmetry. I want to construct a system that's invariant under this symmetry, but it breaks or potentially breaks time reversal and C4 individually. Okay. So, uh, so let's start and, and do the following. Um, let's start with a topological insulator that, that we know and love with a single Dirac cone on the surface. Then you know when I dope the surface magnetically that uh, this Dirac cone acquires uh, an energy gap, right? And uh, the second thing that I hope you know is if I put two uh, uh, regions of magnetic uh, doping or ferromagnetism on the surface of a topological insulator, where the ferromagnetism is pointing in opposite directions, then um, at, the, at the domain wall, at the boundary between these two regions, I get a chiral edge mode, right? Um, so I want to use this effect, okay? A domain wall, a ferromagnetic domain wall on the surface of a TI uh, has a chiral, uh, chiral edge mode. And uh, I want to now take a, a TI that, say, think about it as like a nanowire or something extended in the Z direction, and I want to coat the surfaces uh, ferromagnetically, but in an alternating fashion uh, as I go by 90 degrees. So here, the blue surfaces have, say, a magnetization pointing inwards, and the red uh, surfaces have a magnetization pointing outwards, okay? Now, if I do that, each hinge is a domain wall between two magnetic domains, and hence it carries uh, a chiral, single chiral mode. And uh, so, you know, this whole construction now is C4 times T invariant, okay? If you rotate by 90 degree and you flip uh, the sign of the ferromagnetism, which is the T operation, you leave this structure invariant. And now I'd like to argue that this is a three-dimensional uh, topological property of the material, even though I did some surface manipulation. Don't get distracted by this. So I want to argue that having these hinge modes here is a three-dimensional uh, topological property protected by C4 times time reversal. And, and to argue that, um, I could think about the simplest surface manipulation that I could do to the system and see whether I can get rid of these hinge modes, okay? So what is the simplest thing we can do to a TI surface? We can glue some integer quantum Hall effect to it, right? That's the minimal non-interacting system that I can, uh, I can build. And uh, now I have to do that, of course, in a way uh, that preserves C4 times time reversal, right? That's the rule of the game. So let me uh, decorate the surface with four of these say, churn insulators um, in a C4 time, times time reversal symmetric fashion. And then what happens is that these churn insulators, they contribute at every hinge two extra hinge modes, but they are going in parallel, right? Because of C4 times time reversal, they go in parallel. So, for example, from one hinge mode going down, I could go to one minus two is, is or like minus one plus two, like one hinge mode going up, right? If I total this, if I sum this up. So, so I've changed the number of hinge modes, but I've changed them by two with this surface manipulation. So the fact that I had an odd number will always prevail, and that is protected. So we found a sort of a C2 classification, a topological classification here. And uh, now this was a surface-centered construction, right? I, I broke time reversal symmetry only on the surface. So Maybe you might be a bit skeptical whether this is a true topological 3D bulk phase, but I'd like to argue that it is. So one thing is you can think about bringing this magnetic order all the way into the bulk if you make it weak enough, right? So if you can think of some antiferromagnet that, that has a unit cell like this, then 
you terminate it, you you know have have this ferromagnetism on the surface, but you'd also have the magnetism in the bulk. And if it's weak, it wouldn't destroy your your TI band structure to begin with. And we can also write down a simple bulk model for this. Um, so here, the first part of this is a, a four by four model, yeah. Uh, and the first part is just the usual uh, uh, Dirac model for a topological insulator. It's basically you can think about here. Here are three uh, anti-commuting matrices dotted into the sine kx, sine ky, sine kz that produces Dirac cones at all time reversal invariant momenta, right? And then this is a mass term that gaps them out in such a way that you have a topological insulator in the end. And, and just, you know, we can just make a little addition to this model, uh, which, is, which is this type of term here, which breaks time reversal in C4, but it, it preserves the, the uh, combination of the two. So you see, for example, if you C4 right, maps uh, kx to ky and ky to minus kx, say, and then that term would be odd under this, right, under exchanging kx and ky. So, so, but then the matrix is such that time reversal uh, is also odd under this. Okay, we can diagonalize this Hamiltonian on, on a such a geometry. There's kz still as a good quantum number. You beautifully see uh, these, these chiral uh, hinge modes uh, look pretty much like integer quantum hall uh, edge modes. Just now they are uh, at the termination of a 3D system. Um, and now you might ask, well, is there a three-dimensional topological invariant uh, for such a system as well, right? I, I mean, if I claim it's, it's a 3D topological insulator, there should be an invariant. Um, and of course there is. Uh, before I tell you what the invariant for the higher order is, let me remind you what the invariants are that we have at our disposal for a normal 3D TI. So there are two, one we've just seen. Uh, the other one, I guess, is, is the more fundamental one. If you have just time reversal, you can compute this theta angle or, or uh, magnetoelectric polarization by uh, computing some sort of integral over the Barry curvature. Uh, and, and yeah, here's the Barry curvature, right? You take this Trans Simons form, integrate it over Breuin zone, and that gives you a zero or pi. Uh, modulo 2 pi and the quantization is just you know enforced by time reversal symmetry and the other invariant would be uh, some uh, this this product over the inversion eigenvalues at the uh, time reversal invariant momenta right that we just heard in the last talk so for these higher order topological insulators it's actually super simple the invariant is the same as for the ti it's the same theta angle. It's quantized also to zero or pi. The only thing that's changing is the reason why it's quantized. It's now not quantized because of time reversal symmetry, but it's because of C4 times time reversal symmetry. But you can show that this symmetry enforces the exact same quantization, so the invariant is the exactly same one. It just doesn't protect gapless surface states in this case, right? That's the difference. And, uh, and also a technical difference that doesn't allow you to do all these other formulas like Pfaffian formulas and so forth is that the symmetry protecting this now for spinful electrons, C4 times time reversal, it doesn't square to minus one, it's the fourth power of the symmetry that goes to minus one. But that's just, you know, it's not important for that proof, but for, for other forms of the invariant. For example, what it implies is that this symmetry has four possible eigenvalues, right? It's, it's uh, e to the i pi over 4, e to the minus i pi over 4, and this, these two conjugated by a minus sign. So there's a star of four eigenvalues in the complex plane, if you uh, think about it for a moment. And um, when you now have a system that is also invariant under inversion times time reversal, then you can write down an invariant that uh, looks similar to this Foucault invariant for the TI, just that now you have to basically um, uh, take these. Uh, uh, so, so first of all, you can show that these uh, come in pairs always, in, in some sort of Kramer's pairs, generalized Kramer's pairs, protected by this uh, C4T to the fourth equal to minus one. And then uh, these size here are basically the type of eigenvalues that you need to to take the product over uh, in the occupied bands. This time, not at all time reversal invariant momenta, just uh, in this case, only at the four momenta that are invariant under C4 times time reversal. But in any case, there is a similar formula 
uh, that can be computed uh, from the band structure eigenvalues. Okay, um, in the um, last few minutes, let me give you a little bit of a phenomenology and then also uh, uh, some idea of how to extend these to other systems. So first of all, you could ask yourself, are there also surfaces which are gapless in these systems, right? And the answer is, yes, there, there are also gapless surfaces. It depends all on the crystal orientation. So let, let's do the following uh, Gedanken experiment. So if we have a boundary of such a, such a higher order topological insulator, and we smoothly deform it to make it into a hinge, okay? So this is looking from above. Then at the hinge, you, we know we have this chiral gapless state running, right? At this boundary, there is, everything is gapped, right? There's nothing. Um, so somewhere, to get this state there, somewhere in the process, the boundary needs to be gapless, right? There needs to be at least some critical angle where this entire surface turns gapless. Um, the point I want to make, though, is that this, this angle is, is completely non-universal. It's, it's not fixed by symmetries. So I can, so I, this was the Hamiltonian I had before. I added this perturbation, cosine kx minus cosine uh, ky. If I just have this perturbation, this angle would be 45 degrees. But I can add another perturbation which is consistent with, with C4 times time reversal. And I have a parameter that I can tune to anything between, between 0 and, um, and pi over 2 uh, for this critical angle to be. So it doesn't even need to be any lattice direction. It could be an irrational number. So, so that is not a surface state protected in the same sense as a, as a TCI surface state, where I always know, you know, if I go at the 1, 1, 0 direction, I have a gapless surface or something like this. This is not the case here. Okay. Um, now, how can we extend this idea beyond uh, just uh, topological uh, crystals? Uh, for one, uh, the same Hamiltonian that I showed you throughout the talk uh, happens to also have a particle hole symmetry, so it allows to be, okay, yeah, just one more slide. It allows to be interpreted as, uh, as a superconductor as well. And it turns out that if I do that, so then delta 1 and delta 2 are two superconducting gaps. It's a combination of a spin triplet P-wave superconductor, this uh, barium wertheimer state of helium 3b, with a spin singlet dx squared minus y squared wave, so the stuff that you find in the cuprate. So if you have a superposition of these, which you know, are allowed in a non central symmetric crystal, right? You can superimpose singlet or triplet, then, uh, then this would be, a, a, you know, chiral uh, higher order TI with Majorana hinge states instead of, or chiral higher order superconductor, rather. And just one last word. Uh, you can also generalize this to, to time reversal symmetric systems, so crystals that, you know, just as they grow without magnetic order. In which case, you can show that by, by mirror symmetries, you protect Kramer's pairs of hinge modes. And here's a, a tight binding model that does that. And you see that th th there are Kramer's pairs here. OK, so uh, to wrap this up, I showed you uh, an experiment about extremely robust uh, TCI surface steps, where you can go to large temperatures, large magnetic fields, and so on. And you have always these very well-defined like 10 nanometer wide conducting channels at the surface steps. So it's a, maybe a great platform to, do, to, do, to play with them and do uh, you know, electronics uh, on a small scale. And then uh, I introduced this concept of higher order topological insulators for 3D systems which have uh, these hinge modes. So they basically have the same properties as quantum hall edges or as quantum spin hall edges, just that we don't need to build a complicated 2D heterostructure they could, in principle, appear just in crystal, crystals as grown, just on the edges. OK, with that, um, I hope I told you that there's some interesting stuff in looking at the non-smooth uh, surfaces. And uh, thank you for your attention.